Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of, yes, our re restart reboot of Warplan. So we're going to get nearing to ending this turn, but we're going to send out our submarines. Oh, man, you know, I was just playing oh, not so long ago um, Armored Brigade and you sort of do right and left clicks very different uh, what you do and so I it's not that I don't know how to play this game as I play so many different ones okay and jump back and forth uh, that are similar um let's look at production here so well let's look at our current we have a panzer corps coming for germany we have a battleship for italy so that tells me I want a mech core modern. I could afford a um, armored core, but notice 200 days, 130 days. I'd rather have an armored core now or in 130 days getting ready for our invasion of France than have a mech, you know, mech core now. Um, then have a um, Panzer Corps later. So, yeah. We're going to do I don't think any of these guys, yeah, they can't reach into there. Okay, so. Um, oh, we can look at Italy as well. Okay, we're starting to now stockpile up uh, with Italy. I think we're going to let that go another turn. Um, we can see here that now most of these units down here are at full strength. So they've been mobilizing the um, Italian armed forces. So the Regia Marina, the Regia Aeronautica, and the army. <laughs> I don't know what... The Italians call their their army. Um, Regia or Regina or whatever is Royal, like Royal um, Royal Marine or Royal Navy, you know. So, yeah. Okay, I think we're ready to end this turn now. Um, right, okay. And they'll go through the nurse. No reports available. We didn't do any significant actions. Now, um, hmm. why is this still showing to be out of supply? I don't know. Now, um, also, if you don't know, these two little dots, I presume most of you know by now, are action points. To You need to spend an action point on a convoy lane to have it be um, useful in um, you know, sinking ships or convoys or whatnot. So just sort of generally to know, okay, we're now in the snowing season. Um, before I was looking to see, oh, it's sunny up in... It's sunny in Finland. That makes lots of sense. Okay. Yeah, okay. 
So, um, we're going to continue to... Hmm. Oh, let's move the furthest away. We sort of... Well, we'll say commented on, I think, would be sort of the, something of the safest term. No. About um, using railway movement to get units across here that they don't need to get there that fast. Well, the longer they can sit in a good um, supplied uh, hex, they will get more and more organization levels or effectiveness levels so we want to get them here and then um let them uh, rest for a while i think is the best yeah blaskowitz we have eight command points changing to this uh, von Manstein would cost 35, so we can't change anybody yet. We're earning up more. So we will wait on that. Um, but let's move you off the railway line. Let's move you up to here. I've done it, what, three times now? Back enough that we can't hit them with those tactical bombers. No, these we can. Probably give it a bit of a rest. A turn or two, even prior to our big invasion. But I figure we might as well. I think that makes four times. Okay, so we're getting ready. We want to have the, these guys are at 70% and they're at 86, of course. Let's prioritize reinforcements. Now we're going to spend some trucks just uh, a turn or so prior to our spring offensive in the west so to get ready for that okay we've been spending our big stockpiles here now i will make a special episode covering all the different things you can buy and sort of their purpose and use but one thing here um truck supply is very useful so we're going to um hit that for well um merchant marine you see i'm looking at the number of days uh, 90 days versus yeah we, we're going to get some more merchant marine because we have 
34 merchant marine I don't want to be stuck without that um, so let's spend that for Italy now over back to Germany okay merchant marine 45 doing much better um, escorts only two though so let's look at escorts they're going to take 210 days and they are 40 so we're going to get two of those in production if we can again that's why we have started building our already the shipyards to be able to increase our production of ships now hmm, air force so we don't have enough to really buy a proper okay so and escorts will be somewhat useful let's um Merchant Marine. Hmm. Let's just get a couple of more trucks. Um, obviously, there are 10 per thing, so that will get us up to 60. Now, also on convoys, um, let's see. I want to see. Okay, we're still using the Baltic route. Once we get into the winter and using the coastal route um, in the North Sea along Norway, we should um, assign some escorts to that route to help deal with submarines and such. Okay, I think, um, yeah, influence action points. We've earned one. We're playing with that turned on this time. really spread out the BEF that's interesting it looks to be all infantry I thought they had a motorized armored one last time I'm not sure I'm not sure now, the BEF was entirely motorized historically not necessarily <sighs> okay ha huh. hmm. going back to um, Third Reich, Avalon Hills, the game Third Reich. The sort of standard sort of full strength infantry core that it had was a 3-3. Three, three. three strength movement of three. The uh, the American um, standard infantry core was a 3-4 to show the level of motorization for the Americans. Now, that didn't quite equal to a sort of proper, sort of mechanized or Panzer Grenadier core. Now, mm, those may have existed, but more likely motorized core would be the proper term and at least from the German perspective, all of those would have had some tanks assigned to them. And so it is historically accurate to have a mechanized core in the game. It just, it's drawing lines. Where do you draw the line between a Panzer Corps and a um, Panzer Grenadier Corps, a mechanized? Um, is that they both have tanks. They both have infantry. They both are motorized. And so, yeah, that is a thing, and I would have it different. Um, we do see in this game the ability to um, 
you know help things out a bit with trucks to um, for supply but really don't get the the idea of the difference here for the um, like the British being fully motorized and the um, the French not without necessarily being a proper mechanized group okay um, and yeah that could maybe just deal with action points and things like that here in this game probably best I don't know okay so we sunk three convoys very good uh, I don't know why these are this is well we're heading back Don't know if this is a winter effect that I'm not used to or something else. Or maybe I messed that up because I thought we were in supply because we started the turn in a port with supply. I don't know. That is unexpected behavior. Okay, now. Keep doing that. Damn. Okay. Right click to move in this game. Now these guys are, well, mostly close enough. But still, yeah, we'll probably just keep walking. Again, I did it. And again, I did it. Wow. Because I was just, like I said, playing Armored Brigade, and I was doing the opposite. And I was messing myself up by doing that. Okay, for Italy. Now, we're going to slowly move this garrison force this way, and we're going to slowly move this garrison force up here. I just sort of want to get over here and go, look, we're threatening France. Yeah, we might actually do something. Not really, but, but maybe we can convince you we are. Um, similarly over here. This has just so, such slow movement because of rain. We're not really worried about about Germany anymore, so we'll be keep moving to the Yugoslav border to be ready for those operations. Maybe we should send some units over here. That'd be sort of cool, because they're in supply via the port, and they can cut the rail links very early on. That'd be cool. Okay, we'll get ready for that. Now, okay, um... Again, I need to refresh my memory trucks, escorts. Let's see, I want... Okay, I've got one, two, three, four fighter conf group A. Or... Flieger Corps or Jaeger Corps or whatever. Okay, um, um, four. I want two to three watching the western front here, where, you know, and anti British while either operating in the Mediterranean, while the rest operating either in the Mediterranean or on the eastern front. I definitely don't want to go down below two, so. Okay, looking at the different days. We're going to stay away from Strategic Corps, I think. Um, I think we're going to stick to these. 
sort of basically what Germany did. In my opinion, Germany never got to a strategic air group. Um, they definitely had, there was, oh, I, I'm lousy on aircraft designation. There was a four engine bomber, if I remember correctly, early on, um, but it wasn't very as a sophisticated thing. Later on, Germany, late in the war, was making a few long-range bombers. I know I've, I've watched the series Wings of the Luftwaffe. Highly recommend it. Um, and I just, how much I remember. But one of the four-engine bombers that um, Germany builds, and these are just in limited numbers, is a two-propeller bomber. In that they have two engines in line with each other. driving one propeller not exactly sure how all that works mechanically inside but that's the way it was and they were huge propellers on the thing so probably you know, more or less the um you know the area of air being moved by the two rather large propellers was probably about equal to what a lot of other bombers were moving with four propellers. Um, I don't know the details of that, but to really be able to carry a strategic bombing load, you know, bombs over a longish distance, and you've got to move quick because you can't just so you get just enough airspeed to, to stay airborne. You've got to be able to, you know, get past spiders and things like this. You really sort of need a four engine bomber. Um, and Italy was doing them. Italy was doing a lot of three-engine bombers. Germany really wasn't on any um, grand scale. They were building a few, um, but... And Germany's biggest problem is engines. Not having enough engines. Yeah, historically. So we're... I just don't see... Um, because we can see here, um, tactical is three, tactical is five, tactical is eight, down to strategic one. Okay, so we can do a strategic here, I'm looking over here, um, a five, with tactical five, or strategic eight. Well, if I'm going to really do a strategic bombing campaign, say against Britain, um, as a war-winning objective, um, one of the, or some of these would be really good, but I, from both playing this game and my historical knowledge and other games, I really would rather have more tactical air than that to, and especially in this game, pounding a lot of these units in the east. I would much rather have this going on. The let's see, the one thing here is range. Is that you can have, you know, a unit, I don't know, in, in say in Warsaw, and with 20 hexes, um, that's a lot, you know, so it can be here, and oh, we need them down here, and then next turn we need them up here, or even the same turn, because they got two, you know, um, so I don't know on that range if that's going to get, like, the submarines or whatever, use up both action points to go there, so it may be a long range, maybe two action points, so as you can tell, I've not actually used these um, I did look at the stats at one point. And so, yeah, you can potentially hit spread out targets, which may make you think it's better than a six, or than, um, and especially if you look at it as 250 versus 400. So you would need, if you had two of these guys at 500, is not equal to one of these. But this covers so much more territory. But this covers more missions. So, yeah, I'm more in line with this. But we can see 120 days versus 180 days, 275. So we're going to go with our air superiority fighters. I just want to do that. Um, again, trucks, escorts, let's... Yeah, we don't have enough for a merchant marine here. Let's go over to Italy. Again, Italy. Uh, okay, we have one merchant marine coming. 
and they have a stockpile of 80 and two supply trucks we're going to do take 90 days yep we're gonna do one set of supply trucks I'll keep stockpiling everything else okay so that works let's bomb whatever this is way back here no losses either side this one that I used yeah no losses there oh they're still on oh that's the fighter yeah um oh we need to full support um yeah Yeah, um, yeah, okay, so we want it to be on that. That's right. Okay. Just you want to see the triangle, so we'll do interception missions or escort missions or other similar. Okay. So I'm not exactly sure what that is that we're striking at. Well, no, I don't want to move you right next to the enemy. I know. Well, maybe we should. Yeah, we will. Since we have one more mission there, we'll take it. driving by now I want to see currently supply level okay, both of these are in nine um, this is just now at 91% um, and 79% uh, let's just throw in a truck we're gonna overly supply them and that immediately got it to 15 but hopefully, hopefully we can continue to build that up because as soon as we start to um, drive them anywhere, they're going to start losing organization levels, which is fine because movement is friction versus, you know, prepared attack. Um, so we're good with that. Okay, I think, I think we are doing well. Yeah, we've done production. We're moving our subs back. I think maybe we need to let them sit in the port longer. Uh oh. We've been spotted and intercepted. And are moving too near bases, I think, is partly what's got some of that coming back and forth. And the AI may be handling it better. My understanding, the AI is still being tweaked. Okay, no supplies, no supplies. Um, Lane... Um, we've had, okay, I didn't know that we were going to be doing it this turn. I think I checked last turn. One convoy was sunk. Okay. Um, into port. No. Into port. Into port. Enemy fails. It's interdiction. So they can't, I do know that they can interdict. If they have units, so this is, um, 
been asked about like doing sea lion and um, my understanding is really hard to successfully do um, a sea lion invasion not necessarily really hard to put troops ashore but um, to properly you know successfully um, invade uh, Britain is rather hard now ships will do interceptions you can um, convert them between fleet and raider um, okay so that yeah there they, this is the one that was attacked up there so they've been hurt a little bit so these guys both need to sit in port a little bit there um, so I will um, once France has fallen uh, do an experimental episode probably not a long series uh, or as part of the or as part of the series to demonstrate an invasion um, I don't know how well that's going to work out we have the Deutschland we have um, the Scharnhorst the Hipper a um, a um, light cruiser and destroyer group there and over here we have the Slesian group um, those I think are pre I'm pretty sure those are pre-dreadnought um, so our ships which would have probably included the um, uh, the whole uh, uh, Schleswig Holstein the ones that um, bombarded the ship that bombarded um, Danzig there were pre-dreadnought ships that Germany was allowed to keep, I think it was four pre-dreadnought battleships at the end of World War I. By 1936, two of them had been scrapped. Um, my understanding from looking them up, one of them was definitely in a, um, hey, you know, a little bit of, you know, pull it into a dry dock, a little bit of work on it we can get that really operational again uh the other one uh, it may be pushing the stretch on it i know um for the black ice mod of hearts of iron 3 you have sort of a retcon because it they happened like in 1935 or something as they they scrapped them i think um sort of like do you want to like go back in time and you know save the two ships and have them in the game and I think that's pers personally re reasonable because it isn't really going back in time. It's just sort of like, well, you've been in charge since 1935. It's not like you've had a change in government, you know, from a, um, you know, the Weimar Republic to, um, you know, uh, the Nazis in power. You know, this is you've been in charge. Do you want to, you know, if you if you had been around, then do you want to keep them or not? And they do cost uh, resource points to keep them. So I went in because the, they were appearing there. So I went in and looked them up. I remember one of them was in pretty bad shape. Uh, that they they I'm I'm sure they could have saved it, but would the effort you know of dry docking it, replacing a lot of hull, um, plating and other stuff, would it really have been worth it for a pre dreadnought battleship? One of them I think was in in rather good shape that would have been worth it, but. The German Kriegsmarine at the time was, hey, we don't need these old things. We're going to be building big, modern, new, you know, battleships that the Fuhrer wants to build. So no problem. We are we don't need to keep this old stuff around. Let's just dump the old stuff and we're going to build new. Oops, we go into the war and we don't have a big surface fleet. So obviously the one that was practical in saving it, they should have. One of the one one of the ones that they scrapped, they actually cut a bunch of the, the hole parts, the sort of the sides of the hole, and use them for testing. Um, like shooting torpedoes at her or something. Uh, bomb dropping bombs next to them or something, just to uh, you know, have them in the water, have the you know, the blast effect the hole and just as a testing as a testing bed uh, for some sort of naval testing so they use bits and pieces of, of the ship but they keep two of them that are in the best shape and um, they're fairly useful in world war ii um their biggest problem well, they have two problems their biggest problem is that they don't have any any effective anti-aircraft now that is um reasonably deal withable i don't quite honestly know how much they did you know 
putting some fock verlaines, the four barrel 20 millimeter anti-aircraft guns on the ship, and not that hard to do. Um, you know, so having some level of anti-aircraft, not that hard to do. The other thing is, is they have some reasonably big guns, but because of the age of the guns and the style, they really don't have very good long range. Um, so even things like light cruisers that are more modern can, that are also faster, can s effectively stay out of their combat range. So you go, yeah, what do you want these big slow targets for? Well, if you are um, moving up along the Baltic coast here, you know, which, uh, you know, with troops, fire support from really big guns can be really useful. If you're doing a naval invasion that you've got to get close to the shore anyways, and it might not quite be, you know, they, you know, against, you know, the the Atlantic wall, big heavy guns, hey, I mean, it might get blown apart because you got to get in too close. But doing naval invasions, um, having some big guns can be quite useful. Now, what the two that were kept and were being used because early on um, they weren't they were sort of left the reason all the two of them they got really bad is they were just being left to sit and rot during a lot of the Weimar years and not being properly maintained is my understanding what they do and they send the Schleswig Holstein um, in 1936 I believe it is or maybe it's 37 on a tour down to the um, coming down here off of off the Americas down to the the Caribbean and visit a bunch of nations is sort of a goodwill, but also a training mission. It has a like a hundred um, officer cadets on board. Uh, I don't know if they replaced regular crew or they just bunked in a hundred extra sailors on board. But the idea was is that yes, they're going to do practical seamanship. You know, being you know, your standard crewmen, you know, swabbing the decks, doing engine maintenance, whatever that may entail, that they're doing that, but they're also um, learning to be, you know, um, sailing around the world, um, going to the Caribbean, learning what Caribbean ports look like, hmm, how that might be interesting. Maybe some of these guys might end up being submarine commanders or just officers on board. And if they know where the ports are and where the channels are and where the shipping needs to go, they can be better submarine commanders. So it's pretty good. On the way home, the Schleswig Holstein stops off in, um, uh, is it Plymouth, Cornwall, down out here, you know, um, one of these here. And it ends up playing a, uh, the crew from it plays a uh, English naval football um, crew. Uh, you know, a match between them, and you know, so it stops on that. And this is in you know, 36 or 37, so they do a port visit to Britain on the way home from the Caribbean. So, yeah, it's it, they're useful as training vessels, and that continues through through to the end of the war. They're useful as training vessels. You don't want to have, oh, we've launched the Tirpitz or the you know, the Bismarck or um, whatever brand new battleship. Oh, yes. Oh, you're the new officer. How how many days have you been at sea, sir? Oh, this is my first day at sea. Oh, and the new crewman. Oh, this is my first day at sea. No, you want to be able to have them experience just being at sea, being crewmen. Oh, we have these guys that hasn't haven't operated, so we're going to... Um, yeah, let's pound one deep. Ooh, we took some losses, but we also hit them hard. Let's hit them again. No. Okay. Um... So you want them to have uh, fairly good first. Fairly good um, experience before day one of. before, you know, going on the latest, newest vessels. So training vessels are very useful, especially if you are seriously considering expanding your, your Navy. And even if... Oh, you're still on that. Let's do... 
Fighter strike. Um, uh, I'm going to be using them as submarine crewmen and officers. U boats spend most of the time on the surface because. You know, they're not nuclear submarines, so they're 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 boats, they're small ships uh, that go on the surface and go under the water to attack. So you need all those sailor type skills as well, and it's good to know the actions from a um, ship's point of view before you decide to go in and attack a ship. Okay, now we're looking at convoys here, and we're doing, um, oh, we can also verify this time. Here we're now using, because this port, well, not so much the port. The My understanding is, is the railway coming down from here to the port here, and winter gets snowed up too bad, they can use this railway here. It's not, it's, it's shorter, able to keep open and then um, run the supplies down to Germany. So we have that. It's the Nordic Iron Core. We're going to put one of our um, uh, two escorts in that to help deal with the submarines. Submarines may sink our escorts. Just may happen. But we might as well use them. because That's what they're useful for. Okay, these guys can now hopefully start getting better organized. They're still moving through the snow. I totally, totally agree with like this game and strategic command in the idea that... Um, Overstacking, you know, creating big doom stacks and just moving around the map is really, really wrong. What I dislike about some of this is sort of like, why does this core need to be way back here? I guess I would still, even with this game, may allow, I would maybe allow stacking with HQ um, uh, HQ units. But I would allow um, stacking with massive penalties. That will allow me to switch it out. Um, I don't know. Mm, okay. Um, with massive penalties for actual combat and whatnot, just so that we don't have this huge deep traffic problem so that we can move forward. Now, I would still put a limit on it two three units max but that's just me you come back there okay so that looks pretty good oh did i not build Ooh, i think i did i don't know we'll see it could be bad if I didn't. Not so much for Italy, they were still stockpiling their resources, but Germany. So now I got the, the armored and the mech in production. Those two I really wanted. Ready for our invasion in the west. Okay, so they attack this time, sinking zero convoys and zero escorts. So our escorts presumably helped. Yeah, I'm going to unselect all of these and then select these three. And we're going to move them up to here. So 
these two that are without supply still, one still damaged, is going to sit there. Ah, uh, we can see double rain now. I wanted to show that the other day, but those basically zero. You can still move to, you can still base to new op, new places, but you're basically not going to do any sort of attacks in those conditions uh, for air operations. And rain and snow make it much much harder to um, spot. Um, ships at sea don't know um, how much it affects uh, other ships spotting other ships but okay well 81% 84 good I think some of the um, effectiveness is staying down because of weather. Wouldn't mind a thing that I would sh that would click on tell me why things are or aren't being effective. What's affecting their effectiveness? Okay, I also forgot to put these last turn. Production. Yeah, but that's okay. Um, we forgot to do that. Yes. Uh, so those two are sort of vitally important to my strategy. The Jaeger Corps is going to help definitely with the. Okay, now, um, April, March, so we're going to be going into the West sometime after April 16th, so that we have, um, even at, so even if the weather is nice, I'm going to wait until I have those two core ready to go. I want to hit with four core of very mechanized, motorized type forces to plunge deep into the enemy. Italy supply trucks, merchant marine, very good. Uh, hmm. We've got two escorts coming for Germany. Okay, I think we're going to do One of these. I'm trying to think here what. Hmm, I know I'm not supposed to leave dead air because you start thinking, eh, should we stay around here? Hmm. Hmm. I like mountain cores.
Yeah, let's produce a mountain core. Not going to take hugely long, but we can do that. Yes, we can start now to influence um, intimidate. Intimidation, from my understanding, is like is more likely to backfire on you. Not that it can't be successful, from my understanding on it. And again, um, Alvaro has said that this whole diplomatic stuff, other than de declaring war, is um, almost an afterthought. And it sort of, I think, comes from his sort of um, mindset on it. But he does say that this is sort of primarily in the game for modders to be able to maybe mod things to, to set stuff up. I'm going to... I don't know whether I should... Hmm... I don't want to really go off the rails like, um, oh, I don't know. Uh, I, I see we can't, um, you know, they're, well, they're already in the allies. Um, oh, no, they're not in the allies. Oh, you know, they're not in the allies, but, um. I don't know that we can, um effectively um, you know I like get the um, USA into the axis or anything like that but yeah I don't know whether I should push to try to get like you know I know somebody said yeah let's push to get Spain in the axis I don't even know if that would help Sort of like, I, I sort of see Spain to some degree like Italy. If Italy had stayed neutral in World War II, just think of that. Just think how different World War II would have been. Okay, no Mediterranean, period. There's nothing going on in the Mediterranean. If Italy's neutral, was able to stay neutral, um, probably Yugoslavia, which didn't, even though it does briefly join the Axis, that's very much sort of an intimidation move. Um, so the and the populace didn't like it, but that's why they're happy when the government gets overthrown and they Germany invades. So Yugoslavia would have stayed out of it, okay. And then what Vichy France? You know, landings possibly. Yeah, but basically the Mediterranean is neutral. So what can we see happening? Well. Italy can be trading around the world. It has a fleet that is probably just strong enough that Britain, even, you know, once France is out of the way, but Britain and the USA are not going to demand to stop and search Italian vessels for supplies that are useful by Germany. I almost said the Axis, but the Axis sort of disappears without Italy. So, all Italy has to do is find, oh, I don't know, countries like Persia that would be willing to sell or, um, I wish I had a world map here, or like uh, Venezuela, which is producing oil at this time, I believe. Oil producers that would be willing to sell to it and put oil on ships, bring it to Italy, put them in, you know, tanker cars and roll them across the border on, you know, trains into Germany. So now the Allies can bomb the German side of the, you know, rail points, but without the Mediterranean in the battle, how are they going to get that close? From Britain? Fly from Britain down here? Well, yeah, they can, obviously, because they were flying to Berlin, but that's awfully far just to bomb some damn railways that are going to be pretty easy to rebuild. So... I see a secure southern flank being so much more useful than having Italy actually in the war. So I know it means no Africa Corps, Rommel doesn't get to go down there and bash up the British and all this, but uh, I, and you, I could see um, 
Atlantic Wall times two being able to be built without having to waste all the resources. Fighting down here, um, all those, you know, tank, you know, building tanks and aircraft that operate down here. Oh boy, well, some of the aircraft I'm sure would be, you know, going against uh, Allied bombers. But all those tanks you get to be operating out into the Soviet Union. Massively different war. That's sort of how I look at Spain. Um, as it's somewhere better. And as Spain comes into the war, although it is very mountainous and whatnot, it's just a lot of places for the Allies to land and just start smashing ashore with that many more areas that the Axis has to garrison. And if Spanish units aren't very strong, which they shouldn't be, um, you're going to require German units down there and sending if more than just the Blue Division, you know, sending four or five weak corps or something to the Eastern Front doesn't make up for the amount of Germans that need to help defend Spain. So, yeah. So, but we're going to try. What I want to try is like influencing Vichy France and definitely like Vichy Syria to be um, get them in the Axis and see how that works. Something that is a little more doable. Well, on that note, I think we're going to end here. I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for liking the videos. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And, of course, I'd love to hear your comments about influencing nations. Wouldn't Italy have been... Well, not well, Italy would have been better off had they not joined the war because it wouldn't have been bombed and fought over. But would it have been better off for, for Germany had they just not joined the war? You know, you could think of Italian factories building German model um, aircraft to be sold to Germany. Hmm. That would have been, you know, very useful. So, yeah. And, and, and factories that weren't being bombed. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, love to hear your thoughts. See you next time for more historical gaming.